everyone and welcome to Frontier Opening Bell. I am Boston Amafaye and this is Getting the Business and Markets Week started. Let's uh, move on very quickly and checking with the market uh, week uh, ended uh, Friday. The Egyptian markets on Sunday went up 1.61% on the EGX30. That's a very big jump to start the market in Cairo. Cairo will be joining the rest of the Frontier Africa uh, today. The stock market in Zimbabwe roared, continued to run up about 138,000, reading up by one tenth of a percent on Friday. The Nigerian market down slightly by 0.10%. That's Friday. The figure, the BRVM continued stronger to 210.66 on the composite, better by 35 basis points. The, GIF, the um, Nairobi stock market down by 34, and the GSE fell around 72,000 by by 0.64% on Friday. So let's just take it down. Take a Take it up all uh, looking at big stories. Kenya's trade deficit narrowed by about 108 billion shillings between the first eight months of this year, while the country is looking at various options to repay the $2 billion euro bond falling due by June 2024. In the meantime, the Central Bank of Kenya and investor standoffs is driving interest rate to about 16 year high in East Africa's biggest economy, while Uganda's revenue authority is adopting digital plan into tax administration. And Ethiopia gets debt relief from China and is waiting for similar deal for other creditors. Good news over the past few days, including Zambia, which got an MOU signed with creditors at World Bank IMF Summit. Let's take it up to Nigeria. Again, you're looking at... Um, the West Africa footprint with Nigeria pursuing fresh $1.5 billion budgetary support for 2023 from the World Bank. It's been a whole lot of criticisms about Nigeria heading back to the World Bank, begging for budgetary support. And Nigeria's former president, Orisha Gwabasujo, the head of the NNPC, Melekiari, the head of the Nigerian Content Development and Management Board, uh, Simbi Wabote, and many others are attending the African Energy Week high-profile event this week. Here in Cape Town, South Africa, Frontier Opening Bell is coming to you today from Cape Town, the center of the city, ICC. We're covering all that live for you. And the Nigerian um, upstream uh, sector regulators granting the first oil exploration license under the new Petroleum Industry Act, which was signed during the President Mohamed Buhari's uh, period. And Moody's has assigned BAA1 rating to Africa specialty risks, that special insurer set up by the African Union. And the outlook is stable. Gabon says it's repaid more than 30 billion uh, francs of its external debts, while the Bank of Africa Cote d'Ivoire first half 2023 showed a net profit of 93.3% and that's a big jump. So let's uh, check in through with uh, the Southern Africa. Of course, the uh, Cape Town is where the uh, at least seven African uh, uh, leaders, uh, international oil and gas companies, those doing business in hydrogen power and everyone in between fiscal policymakers, others will investors will meet, including Africa Bank, OPEC and a lot of others are meeting starting from today. To be in plenary. Uh, opens on Tuesday morning. We'll bring you everyone up to speed. But that good news uh, for that memorandum of understanding midwife by the IMF between Zambia uh, and the uh, creditors is one of the big news coming through from the week just behind us. The GSE, South Africa's stock exchange, is uh, starting market for carbon markets and uh, renewable certificates. Uh, African markets are resilient to global shocks, and that's according to the ABSA's FMI, while the Mozambican budget forecasts about 5.5 percent growth for 2024 period. In Zimbabwe, some white farmers may be repaid in federal government bonds. That's part of what Luli Tube, the finance minister, was talking about over the weekend, trying to find a way out of that very naughty affair that's taking years to resolve. So let's take it up to North Africa. Egypt wants to raise IMF loan to about $5 billion amid the foreign currency wars. In the meantime, the Saudi Arabia and the UAE have renewed their $10 billion deposit with the Egypt Central Bank, providing liquidity soft landing for President al-Sisi and his administration. And Morocco's economy stands at 2.3% in the second quarter. That's according to the Central Bank, the Bank al-Maghrib, and Morocco is holding subsidies reform on geopolitical 
uncertainties. Things are a little bit testy right now for the North African economy. And the IMF in Tunisia is looking to review the economy and financial developments in the coming weeks under President uh, uh, Saeed as Tunisia returned uh, millions of dollars back to the EU on this agreement and say no thank you. And finally, Tunisia is telling listed companies to publish their third quarter results latest by this Friday, the 20th of October. There will be consequences if they don't. And that's your Frontier Opening Bell, Monday, the 16th of October, from here in Cape Town, South Africa. I am Bolsonaro. Have a great day.